minutes to talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report. He puts out new issues every Monday with updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check that out on the front page of TFNN under the newsletter tab. And don't forget about the webinars he's got under the services tab at TFNN. You can check out Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spreads, as well as his Japanese Candlestick Pattern Stock and Option Strategies webinars, both of those available under the services tab for 97 bucks. They're archived. You can watch them as many times as you like. And boy, we got some action. Let's jump into it. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, it's been quite a uh, 48 hours in this market, almost 24 hours in this market from that CPI print we got yesterday, Teddy. Where do you want to kick things off, man? Well, we definitely had some explosive volatility yesterday. Obviously, we hammered a big lower move low on the dollar index. You know, I mean, right now you have the U.S. dollar as well as yields in a corrective mode right now. I think, you know, overall, there's no confirmation of a trend reversal. That's for sure. You know, I think that the... Uh, hype of it all especially with rates is getting way ahead of themselves you know as far as where the yield curve is or is not going you know so but i think that the volatility is very reflective i mean you had a two and a half handle move in the in the 10 year excuse me in the 30 year and a huge move in the 10 year last year or last yesterday so of course the dollar is going to get sacked like it did you know but if if you look at the levels like we had especially in the tiger forex report we're coming into very corrective areas so the target levels are nice. Now, we, it had an extreme move yesterday. I was looking for us to creep up to these levels over three to five trading sessions, not in one. You know, So uh, that volatility factor, I, I think that's something that is needs to be paid attention to. Um, we had a, extreme volatility off of not new. And it, not, the news wasn't anything that should have sparked that kind of volatility. So I think you, you're running extremes right now. You probably squeezed out a lot of weak longs and shorts yesterday, especially with that interest rate move. And I think that you can see the pullback today is profit taking just off of yesterday. But I'd be cautious with these new higher move highs and lower move lows, especially in the FX pairs, because the question is, if it's a correction, while well, we're bottoming and topping out, we're not we're not reversing trend, you know, and that's what you really have to pay attention to. Do you find yourself, Teddy, trying to do the math on the, the Fed and where they go from here? I mean, that's a lot of focus, of course. We had Chairman Powell the prior week. Um, and then, of course, you got economic data on the Friday, and then we have the CPI, and we got PPI week number today. Uh, a lot of conversation, of course, is about what the market's pricing in maybe for even cuts next year. Is that mm -hmm. something that you try and wrap your brain around and try and not predict, but are you trying to work that out in your head, or are you just kind of looking at, at, at the currencies and, and the momentum and the trends that they're working on right now? Great question. Long term, absolutely. I'm looking at that. I mean, if the Fed... Even if they don't go dovish, just the fact that they would say that they're stopping, you know, sure. for a, whether it's three, six months or just in, not indefinitely, but they're, you know, say, let's say they're, we're going to stop and yeah. we're not going to think of being hawkish unless the numbers really go back the way they were. If we're in a situation like that, and I think that's pretty much where we're going to be. Remember, we got an election year next year and we have over eight trillion dollars see our our fed and our treasury department in their ultimate genius over the last five years and ten to ten years they financed everything like they did in the 90s under the clinton administration they use one through five ten-year notes to finance the whole government you don't do that you do that when you want to window dress your own balance sheet you know that's where you got your your supposed surplus back in the 90s that there was a synthetic move with uh, because of interest rates now we're going to pay the price next year. We have eight point some trillion coming due in, in the next 12 months before Christmas of next year, as well as the next two to three trillion we're going to tack on just for regular spending for 2024. That's not including anything else they ask for for Ukraine, Israel, the illegal aliens, you know. So that's a lot of money for us, the Treasury market, to absorb, you know. Sure. So I think that right now, especially. The Fed is looking at that issue. They're like, well, how are we going to raise 10 to 12 trillion? That's a trillion dollars a month they basically have to raise starting in, the, in January. You know, how are you going to do that if you keep on hiking rates? You're not going to yeah. get anyone to invest in bonds. Your auctions sure. are going to get crushed. You know, not to mention, hopefully they're going to do it in 30 year notes. You know, so because even at the rates we're at now, it's going to be a lot better than if they keep raising rates over the next five to six years and they keep doing what they're doing. You're looking at having more bills come due in five to 10 years 
at absorbent rates, you know, refinancing, you know, so hopefully fiscal responsibility hits the Fed and, the, and also the Treasury Department, because otherwise we're, we're going to have a really big problem with the credit markets, you know, and what is that going to do to the dollar? Well, it could actually make the dollar an extreme bull, but the value of the dollar is going to collapse and the velocity of money is going to collapse as well. So that doesn't. So that means that it doesn't matter how strong the dollar is because inflation is just going to just outweigh it. You know. So I'd be very, hopefully that's not the situation, but that's what's looming. So that's where I'm looking in the long term forecast and short term. I still think that you have to think that there's possibly another quarter point between now and the next two to three Fed meetings before they go on a pausing cycle. So that means we're we're probably capping. Where, as far as how high the thirty-year uh, and ten-year and even the short-term rates are going to rally, you know, I would watch. I think you'll probably see a lot of action this, in the smaller interest rates. You know, like the short terms, like the euro dollars and the ones, twos, threes, and fives, your, your notes and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's where your volatility is going to be. But if the if if I'm right in that scenario with the with the bigger interest rate contracts, that means the dollar is going to get into a range trade. It's probably for the next three to six months that's going to be established. But I don't think that we've seen the high in the dollar index yet. You know, just okay. and also I don't think we've seen the low, you know, in the uh, treasuries either. I think there's still one more spike. Even if it doesn't take out the lows, we should probe those bottoms before we have a confirmation of at least ending the hawkish stance by the Fed. Yeah, and it is interesting. Maybe we, you know, we're getting quite a pullback. We're already what twenty-two ticks. I got the ten-year off mm -hmm. of where we were trading at last night. Quite an interesting pullback. But the market, um, market doesn't care, man. Market going higher, picking up on yesterday's acceleration. What do you think about crude? All the talk, uh, crude? you know, crude seventy-seven handle. Uh, what do you think of the price of action in crude this morning? Uh, you know what? I like the stability right now. I just don't think it's. I, I'm not bearish on crude. I think right now you're in a consolidating range trade i'm still bullish especially with geopolitical tensions and we're also heading into winter time you know sure. i can't imagine that commodity prices are going to stay stable to even deflating over the next three to six months and i think that as long as if if those trends continue i can't see how you're not going to see a spike in oil now let's say that we have an abnormally warm winter maybe maybe then that would keep things better but if we have especially a cold winter some major storms that hit the u.s depending on especially like the northeast you know and things like that um or even let's say things happen in texas like happened over the past couple sure. of years you know like if the, those temperature extremes hit those areas well then i can see a nice spike in oil for sure you know so because you're just gonna the, the demand i think will be increasing then and we could still see another pop you know and now if the middle east keeps on blowing up then hundred dollar oil is still on the charts and i can't believe it's thanksgiving already next right. week um but we'll probably talk to you next wednesday one more time before the holiday teddy i appreciate it as always man have a great week we'll talk to you next wednesday okay take care tommy take care teddy folks stay tuned we'll be right back for one more segment don't go away